Wednesday. <laughs> Friends, I welcome all of you to today's Eucharistic celebration. Today's homily, I titled it, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Reflecting on how Jewish had gathered the people of Israel to make that commitment, which I believe it is the same commitment that we are all making today in the presence of God. And making this commitment renews our covenant, renews God's protection on our family, on our church, on our community. And I would like us to sing the old chorus hymn that I know that all of us will sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No For me, even if no one is going with me, I've decided to follow Jesus Christ. And so sometimes we tend to forget so easily and so quickly. The people of Israel were sent from Egypt. Moses led them from slavery to the promised land. And on the way, crossing the Red Sea, the rocks on the ground, because the sea separated into two, they were protected from their enemies. When they were hungry, God provided them food, manna. He provided them meat well. He provided them water. When he told Moses, strike your staff on this rock. And water started flowing. But suddenly the people of Israel forgot about all this. They started sinning. They started hating one another. They even started worshiping other gods. And Joshua said, this was not a covenant. This was not a promise made for our God. And if we continue this way, we will not reach the promised land. He said, I and my family, we will worship the living God. And as I said at the beginning of the matter, after the presentation, the people of Israel, they remembered what they forgot. And they said, we do, we will worship the living God. And that is the reason why we are here. So let me ask you, if you are ready to follow Jesus Christ, raise up your hand. Yeah, all our hands are up. It's kind of renewal of our promise, of our pledge, of our covenant with God. And God will never be with us. But you know, every free choice carries an obligation. Jesus Christ said, if you have decided to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. Your own cross is not my own cross. My own cross is not your own cross. And think of Prophet Elijah two Sundays ago. He was carrying his own cross. It was tough for him. It was difficult, and at the point he said, enough is enough, I can't do it anymore, enough is enough, take away my life. The Lord said, I am here for you, I have not abandoned you. Think of Job, when Job was carrying his own cross, 
His wives abandoned him. His children. He lost his cattle, horses, houses. And he said, I caused me the day I was born. Because it was too difficult for him. But Jesus Christ first carried the cross to remind us that he is always there for us. So the Son of Man will suffer and die, and on the third day he will rise again. And in the book of Exodus, it says, Wherever you go, I will go with you. For you are mine. I will never abandon you. And so, what are your own crosses today? What are your own pain? Sickness. Difficult moments. No two days are the same. There are days that you wake up. You see yourself crying because things are not working the way you have expected in life. Or a phone call from your doctor that changed everything in your life. And life is no longer the same. The cross that you carry is not the cross that I carry. Beneath every smile, are unknown tears. The fact that you see people smiling every time does not mean that they don't have their own pain, their own crosses. And if you think that your own cross is greater than the other, wait until you sit down with other people and listen to your story. And then you wipe your tears and realize that your own cross Think of the people that have no houses. Think of the people that are in war zone. Think of the people that are not even sure of the next day's bread. Think of those that have no water to drink. I mean, the list, the list goes on and on. But count your blessings. Sometimes it becomes difficult. And this week has been a little bit difficult for me because my mom has been sick since last Monday. She has been on IV on and off. She had acute malaria. I've been trying to, to connect with my family and talk to them. And it's so hard when you are far away. So keep my mom also in your prayers. And name is goodness. And so we all have our own crosses to carry, friends. But one thing is sure, God is always with us. And once we say yes, He will take care of us. And because we have said yes in the second reading, the message says, love one another. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. I think I've been in a while in America now, and uh, one thing that I've seen is that spouses love themselves so well. But I think husbands love their wives more. A typical example of that is. I visited several homes and each of those homes that I visited, any place that I saw two cars, the best car always belongs to the woman. <laughs> the best car always belongs to the woman. And that shows the spirit of care. Because hot bars care. And wives care. And I want you to think of one thing. These words, I love you, is very powerful. And I want you to use that often. And when you say it, mean it. Don't just say it for say you say it. Mean what you say. 
When you say, I love you, it heals. I love you, renews the spirit. I love you, rekindles the light of God in you. I love you, reunites. That's the message. And when we think, and when we remember the people that are celebrating their wedding anniversary, like Jen and Rick Fagan today, the fact that they are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary does not mean that they have not had any problem in life. But it means that they have been able to manage their problems, to control themselves, and to present all their needs, difficulties before God. And some people celebrate 50th, 60th anniversary. And so life is not easy sometimes. But in your own situation, remember, even when you think that you are suffering so much, remember that others are suffering. Count your blessings, brother, and think of what God has done in your life. Sometimes you get angry because of little things. Don't allow minor things to take the place of major things in your life. We know so many things, but the spirit to overlook minor things can reunite our family always. Remember, you have not failed. And don't allow your failure from the outside to get you on the inside. Always have that big moment to move on when life becomes difficult. Martin Luther King Jr. said, The ultimate measure of man is not where he stands in times of comfort, but at times of challenges and controversy. Life can be difficult sometimes. But counting on Jesus Christ, counting on your spirit to move on, even when the heat becomes so much, is very important. Sometimes you make excuses, but don't make excuses. Buy the bullet and move on. So I say that nothing of value is ever achieved without risk. Get up. Get over it. Get ready. Have that spirit of resistance. Even when things get rough in your life, count on God. And He will always be there for you. Because you have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus Christ has decided to protect you. God will provide for you and direct you. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Let us come to Him in times of pain, in times of sorrow, bringing our sickness, for He will never, never abandon us. Amen. Amen.